This week's video is going to focus on another core programming concept, conditional statements. No matter how cleverly we write a program, it's of limited utility if it does the same thing every time. We've already added some ability to customize our programs through command line parameters and variables, but all of the programs we have written still execute the same sequence of statements every time they run. Conditional statements allow us to choose between two or more sets of statements based on the state of our system, user input, the results of a command, or a number of other criteria. The most common conditional statement, and the one I'm going to focus on in this video, is the if statement. The if statement accepts a test command as a parameter and executes the subsequent statement block if the test was true. The test command is extremely versatile. I'll only demonstrate a small subset of its functionality in this video. We're going to look at four common uses for the test command. Comparing two numbers, testing the number of parameters passed into a script, checking to see if a file exists and has certain permissions in place, and testing the value of a string. We're going to test out the if command by writing a script that will accept a command line parameter that represents the name of a file and change the executable status of that file. I've already outlined the structure of the script in comments. The if statement will help us flesh out the script so that it accomplishes the task at hand. Let's start with the first comment after the header, which says that the script is going to make sure that it got exactly one command line parameter. The first step for this is finding out how many command line parameters were passed. In a bash script, the special parameter $number contains the number of parameters that were passed to the file. We can print it out to the screen like this. Now if we run our script with one parameter, it will print out one. If we run it with two parameters, it will print out two. If we run it with no parameters, it will print out zero. But we, just don't, but we don't just need to print the number of parameters, we need to make a decision based on the number of parameters. That's where the if statement comes in. To write our if statement, we'll start with the word if, then we'll use the test built in, we'll refer to our number of parameters, and then make a comparison. We want to test whether our number of parameters is not equal to the number one. So we use the dash NE comparison operator followed by the number one. This is how we could test numeric integers to make sure that they're not equal. You can check for a reference online or in your textbook to see which comparison operators we can use with the test built in. On the next line we will write the word then and below that, we'll write any code we want to execute if this condition is true. In this case, I'll write an echo statement and exit. I've indented these two lines a few spaces to show that they belong within the if statement. Bash doesn't care about the indentation, but it makes it easier to read. When I'm done with code that will execute as part of the if statement, I can end that code block by writing fi. This is the basic structure of all if statements. If, test, then, code, fi. Let's run this code. If I execute the script with no parameters, I get the message I just typed. If I execute it with one parameter, I don't get the message. If I execute it with two parameters, I get the message again. The only way to skip this code that I just wrote is to enter exactly one parameter at the command line. This is exactly what we wrote in our code. If the number of parameters is not equal to one, execute the lines inside my if statement. Let's go on to the next code block. My comment says that I should check to make sure the given file exists. The test built-in has a way to do just that, the dash e parameter. I'll write this if statement, if test dash e dollar sign one, then, then echo the file exists five. Notice that I put quotation marks around $1. I don't want my script to have problems if the file name has spaces. We can verify this, we can run this to verify that it works. 
I'll check it with a file that does exist and with a file that does not exist. And it behaves as I would expect. Now I'm going to modify that statement slightly so that it checks if the file does not exist. I can put an exclamation point before my dash e parameter to reverse the logic of what it tests. I'll modify my echo statement accordingly. And, and add an exit statement so that my script will automatically quit if the file does not exist. My next comment block says to display the current permissions on the file. I don't need the if statement for this. Nor do I need my if statement for the next block where I ask the user if they want to proceed. But then I want to test the user's answer, so I'll need another if. This time I'm going to do a string comparison. I can I can test strings by using equals equals to compare whether two strings match or exclamation point equals to see if they do not match. In this case, I'm going to terminate my script if they typed anything besides yes. So if test my variable name not equals yes then echo, terminating script, permissions not changed. Once again, notice that I put quotes around my variable name and quotes around the word yes. Finally, I need to change the permissions on my file. This time, I want to execute one of two statements depending on the results of my test. I can make that kind of decision using an if-then-else structure. If, one, if the condition is true, it will execute the code in the then section. If the condition is false, it will execute the code in the else section. There will only be one phi and one if. The then and the else are part of the same if statement. The test parameter to test whether a file is currently executable is dash x. So again, this test statement that I just wrote if the file is executable, then change the permissions to make it not executable. Otherwise, change the permissions to make it executable. Our script is now complete. Let's run it and test it out. I'm going to pass in the file I created in last week's video, arithmetic.sh, as a command line parameter. As you can see here, it is currently executable. If I run the script, type yes, hit enter, then list my file again. It is no longer executable. If I run the script again, type yes, 
and it lists my file, it's now back to being executable. I highly recommend looking at a reference for the test command to see what else it can do. We're not going to cover any more features in this video, but I do want to show some alternate ways you might see the test command written. I'm going to modify the very first if statement we wrote. Instead of using the word test, we can use a square bracket. This is another way of writing the exact same command. You could see either syntax and scripts you're reading. If we use the open bracket, we need to have a corresponding close bracket. There must be spaces surrounding the brackets for them to work properly. The other thing you might see is the then being placed on the same line as the if. We need to separate the two statements. If we do that, we need to separate the two statements with a semicolon. In fact, any two commands can be written on the same line if they are separated by a semicolon. The changes we just made won't affect what our program does at all. They're purely an aesthetic choice. There's a lot more we could go into about if statements, but that's all I'm going to cover today. Now you can make scripts that make real decisions.